Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? I thought I'd introduce you to my little friend here. I like to call him Little Lindy. OK. This is actually a 1928 Charles Lindbergh aviation doll. Why is he wearing lipstick? I came to the pawn shop today to try and sell my 1928 Charles Lindbergh aviation doll. People might think it's a little weird to love dolls. I don't. It's a wonderful hobby for a grown man to have. Where did you get this thing? You know, I've actually uh, had it for quite a while. It's been in my family. Do you know anything about it? It's Charles Lindbergh. And this was done the year after he does the transatlantic flight. It's called an Our Lindy doll. Yeah, Charles Lindbergh became a household name after he flew solo across the Atlantic Ocean. It's 1927. They couldn't make really big planes that were fuel efficient to get him across the ocean. The plane he flew, the gas tank was so big and towards the front of the plane, he had to fly it with a periscope. It was dangerous. He must have been a real badass. You're absolutely right. In 1919, a New York City hotel owner offered a 25 grand reward for the first pilot who could fly nonstop from New York to Paris. Many died trying and it went unclaimed until 1927 when Charles Lindbergh made his famous flight. Charles Lindbergh was a rock star back then. Within that first month that he got back, he was offered $5 million worth of promotional deals. In today's money, that's like $65 million. All right, I mean, it's definitely cool. It's in great shape. I mean, you still even have the goggles. It was well cared for. You know, if it wasn't for my wife and my daughter, I'd probably still have it and display in my house. As it turns out, my wife hates it, and I tried to put it in my daughter's room, and she screamed. <laughs> OK. Doll collectors will be all over this, but since it's Lindbergh, it opens it up to a lot more potential markets, from aviation collectors to straight up history buffs. What price are you looking for? Let's say 1200 <sighs> No. I'll give you 400 bucks. <laughs> I mean, I've seen smaller Lindy dolls yeah, from the uh, same time period. They go for like 100 150 bucks. Just because it's a little bit bigger doesn't mean it's worth that much more. Would you go 900? I mean, look at this face. How can you not love this face? I'll tell you what. 500 bucks, I'm not going to go a penny more. That's what I could go. No. How, how can you sell your best friend for 500 bucks? I would take less than that for Chumley right here. <laughs> <laughs> 500 bucks is what I will go. What do you think, fella? <sighs> All right. All we'll right. do it. That's right, a deal. All right, jump, go right about it. Let me try it over there. Yeah, you know, it seemed like he would not budge from $500. Uh, and to tell you the truth, if I walked back in that door with that doll, um, my wife would put me out. So I really had no choice. Johnny! Hey, what's up, Rick? Check this out. Oh, wow. I was really surprised to see Rick today. He brought me in an interesting piece that I haven't seen in a really long time. I had a guy come in and sell this to me. I don't know a lot about it, but I thought it was really cool. I took a shot on it. You were out of town, so um, I just winged it. Cool, man, cool. Well, I know Lindbergh was the rock star of the day. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's probably no guy bigger than him. I mean, as far as just world presence and just what he did for the United States and just made the world smaller by one flight. I mean, it's amazing. In the late 20s, Charles Lindbergh was huge. I mean, this was at a time where dolls started to model big icons of the period. You could see with exact detail, I mean, it's Charles Lindbergh. I mean, the face, look at the waves in the hair. They've captured everything from the dimples on his face. It's an exact likeness of Charles Lindbergh. They took pride in this piece when they made it. So do you think it's the real deal? Yeah, definitely. This is probably late 20s, probably a year after the flight. You got the leather feet, you got the leather helmet, you got even the little goggles. I mean, this stuff's always lost, you know? And then when it's supposed to the elements, too, sometimes these have stains on the clothes a lot of times. It's here, the suit looks in great shape. Everything looks intact for the period. The condition, and this is phenomenal. For a 1928 piece, I mean, this is as good as you get. Let me ask you, how much did you pay for this piece? I paid 500 bucks for it. Really? did pretty good. Okay. I would put a retail value of 16, 18 hundred in this piece. Really think I can get 1600 bucks out of it? That's what I'd put on it in my store. How much you give me for it? So you're saying if I was gonna buy this, I would pay. I love doing business with Johnny. I get his expert opinion, and maybe I'll get a little bit of his cash too. <laughs> I'd give you seven. I bet you'd pay a thousand. I don't know if I give you a thousand. I'd definitely give you eight hundred.
All right, sounds like a deal. All right. Cool. All right, all the work is done now. <laughs> Rick kind of threw me for surprise in offering me the piece, but I'm very happy you did. I mean, it's a nice piece. I'd love to have it in the store, and definitely I know a lot of guys that would love to put this into their collection.